and we're back to learning GIMP. And this time I'm going to show you how to create this cube typography design. It's a multi-step process, so you may want to pause the video here and then follow these steps one by one. Let's first create a square, make it 1080 times 1080. Then press T, use the type tool, create some text. It has to be multi-line. Afterwards I press Ctrl A to have it all selected and I size it up. Let me try 120. It should be good for my canvas size. I can work with that. Next step is to use the rectangle tool. So we've got this text for now on one layer. Now we use the rectangle select. And the position where you select it is important. So you don't really want to select it where you've got round shapes. So curved letters like S or O, even G. It's no problem with I, M, E, and even A. Let me cut it right here and you can see afterwards the O is not going to be perfect while the other letters should be perfect. I press Ctrl X to cut it out and then I go to edit and paste in place. It's a floating object, so I confirm putting it on a new layer by clicking on new layer. And now we've got this text on two layers. Afterwards, I've got the top layer selected, which is the right part of the text. I go to layer, crop the contents. Use the alignment tool, left click on it, and I'll put it to the left. Now I'll go to the second part of my text. So it was this first part on the left hand side. Once again, layer, crop the contents. Use the alignment tool, left click on it, and now put it to the right. So this is what you should have now. And let's create a third text element for the bottom. I'll just call that in GIMP. Make it as big as the other ones, so Ctrl A, size it up to 120. Now I use the Rotate tool. I left click on it and I make it minus 90 degrees and I confirm via Rotate. Again, align it, this time to the left and the bottom. And let me position the other text elements to the bottom as well. So I left click on that for each layer and put it to the bottom of the image. Next step is to create a new empty layer. It's important that it's transparent. I confirm it via OK. Afterwards, we can start with the mapping process. But first, let me rename our text layer so that we don't get lost. We have three sides that are visible in our cube. These are going to be the back, the right, and the bottom. So this is what I'm going to name my three text layers. I keep empty for the top one, and now I go to Filters, Map, and use Map Object. I've got the wireframe deselected. I've got box selected in drop down, transparent background is active and create new layer. So that our result will be on a new layer. When you have, let's say, plane selected, you will not see the box in the top menu. So have box selected in drop down, then go to box. And now we can find our sides. For back, we'll select back. For front, it's going to be empty. For top it's empty, bottom should be bottom, left is empty, and right should be right. And now if we confirm via preview, we should see our text right here in the preview window. We can scale it a little bit right here in X, Y, and Z. Well, let us first go to orientation, where we can reposition it in X, Y, and Z axis. So that's somewhat in center. Now let me go back and I scale it a little bit down so that we have our entire text in a preview window. You can already see our three text elements are on the correct sides. And now it's all about what you want to have as an angle and as a position. For position, 0.5 is the center. 
So I have x and y set to 0 0.5 and that will scale it a little bit up or down. And rotation, it now rotates it around these three axes. Let me use something like this, that's a good example, I believe. On the light, you can adjust the light, point light. If you zoom out, can we adjust it like this? So there is this point, you can drag it around, which is going to adjust x, y, and z position. And depending on where the light comes from, one of these text elements will be gray. You can also use no light and they will all have the same color. Let me stick to point and then you can adjust the ambient. Once you're happy with the results, just confirm you're okay. It will take some time to get processed. But you should have something similar to this. So this new on a new layer and you can see the O ladder isn't perfect. As I've said, it's not working that well on round shapes, in this case round letters, but the E letter, M letter, A letter, this all works perfectly. So when you select your text, be careful with these S, O, Q, G letters and select your text accordingly. But this is the process that you can use to create such a cute typography designing game. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.